Hey, it's your boy Sebastian back with another mix tip for these 31 days to a better metal mix. Today, I'm going to show you how to compress for aggression and punch on your metal drums. So one of the things that I struggled with when I was a beginner in this whole mixing thing was that I was very timid in using compression, um, especially on drums and pretty much everything else, but drums specifically. And I always wondered why my drums didn't have kind of like that, like insane crack especially snares for that matter. And they didn't have that like crazy punchy tech death kind of sound to them that I was very used to hearing on my favorite records. And what I found out later after taking a couple courses and, you know, experimenting for hours on end was that it comes down to very aggressively compressing your drums. So let's go ahead and dive into a few elements of my drum kit. And let me show you how I'm compressing everything so that you guys have an idea of what I'm doing here. So I got my SSL channel strip here for my kick drum and I am compressing pretty, pretty aggressively. I have a two to one ratio and a very fast release and a slow attack. I want to emphasize the transient of the kicks. I want to have them punch pretty hard as we have a tech death track that we're working with. So here is how the kick sounds without any compression. Not too bad, but there's like, you know, some disparate kind of up and down little kicks happen in there. Let's pop this bad boy in and see how it sounds now. Much more consistent and much more even. If you really pay attention to that, I'm gonna back that up. So here it is off. Okay, and here it is on. Now, when it comes to tech death kind of kicks like this, those really fast kind of sounds, I don't like having it go past 60 dB. As you can tell, when he starts doing the burst, it kind of tickles around 60 dB. And the reason it's doing that is because the low end buildup is actually triggering the compressor even more. So it's actually also acting kind of like a pseudo low end controller so that when the low end blooms on those fast bursts, it actually brings it down and evens everything out. When you get later in your advanced mixing career, you're gonna notice that compression can be used to actually control low end. And I'm gonna show you guys that later on the bus for the drums on how I use that bus compressor to actually control the low end of my drums to kind of give them this like rubber band glue effect so that the low end doesn't get out of control, but it's still really punchy. So that's kick drum, two to one ratio, fast release, excuse me, and fast attack. Moving on to snare. Now I have four different snare tracks here, each basically having the same type of compression. So I only really need to cover one. Don't worry about the rest of them as they all have the same type of compression. So very similar to the kick drum, but a much more aggressive ratio. I have found that snares need tons of compression to kind of have that crack and snap that we're all used to having in our favorite metal records. So that's gonna be a six to one ratio instead of a two to one ratio. Same thing though, fast release and very slow attack. So let's play that snare without any compression. So you can hear like the dynamics are a bit all over the place. Let me turn on that compressor and hear how it sounds now. Now I'm gonna turn it off and I want you guys to hear that again without any compression. And again, one more time with the compression. So as you can hear, it sounds like he's smacking it a lot harder and I'm compressing pretty much six to 10 dBs worth of Compression, don't be shy with compression on metal drums. You need to kind of annihilate them with compression to go ahead and get that punching crack that we're looking for. And again, a six to one ratio and a slow attack and a very fast release. Now, let me show you those bus compressor settings that I quickly mentioned. Here is my bus compressor of choice. It's the Waves SSL bus compressor. The one from SSL themselves is also really good and it does a great job. I just decided to use this one. I have a 30 millisecond attack or the slowest attack on this and the fastest release. Now, again, I'm trying to emphasize the attack and punch of the drums. 
Now I'm going to play the drums without any compression. And I want you to specifically, if you have a really good pair of headphones or monitors, specifically pay attention to that low end. Now I'm going to play that for you again. And now here, when the compressor is engaged, how the low end kind of just gets sucked back a little bit, but still has that punch and glue, but is not overbearing anymore. especially on those bursts right there. So here, here I'm gonna bypass this and check out how it sounds without the compression. Low end is kind of loose sounding and, and, and kind of all over the place. I engage it. Much more consistent, much more punchy, and frankly, it sounds a little bit more aggressive to me. It took me years to actually finally be able to hear that. I used to just set it and like not even think about it until I finally realized that I can use bus compression on my drums to control kick low end. So it allowed me to be able to boost way more low end on my kick drums and have the bus compressor kind of just suck it back down. But I was finally able to get that like punch from the low end that I was looking for by these settings. Now, these are classic settings. You don't have to, you know, think about it. I almost never change these from my mixes. 30 millisecond attack, fastest release SSL bus compressor. Now, as far as my master bus compressor goes, I have similar settings, but uh, to a much gentler degree. Now, this is the actual SSL bus compressor that I have from SSL. This is their model. I have a two to one ratio. I have the fastest attack, but I have the release set to auto. These are classic SSL master bus settings. I, again, personally never change these. The only thing that ever changes is if I find that my snare is a little bit out of control, I'll change it from 30 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. And that's gonna just add an extra layer of control to act on the offending snare hits that um, are poking through the mix and a little bit too much. But 30 millisecond attack tends to work extremely well for metal because you want those uh, transients to kind of just pop through and give you that uh, punch and attack that you hear from your favorite mixes. So I'm gonna play the mix without it. And again, really pay attention to the low end, the mid range, specifically on the guitars and the vocals. So the low end is getting controlled, the guitars are being pushed back a little bit, the vocals are being brought down, and everything kind of just has a, a blanket of control set there. Now, I tend to just leave it around minus 2 dB of gain reduction, sometimes 4 depending on the track, but 2 dB to 3 dB is usually where I sit with this. I used to just put this shit up and just set it up and like fucking forget about it and never really think about it again. It was really, really uh, kind of just mixing by presets as most people do when they're first starting out. Um, but uh, later down the line, when I really started to get, um, you know, mixing for hours every day, I started to realize like, oh, okay. Like I, I, I know how I can finally get that low end control that I'm looking for. So if that's pretty much how I would, um, you know, use compression to add punch and aggression to my mixes, specifically to my drums. Um, I kind of did a side tangent and showed you a little bit of how I would do it on my bus compressor, but I felt it was uh, necessary to show that too, because they're very similar into how they interact in terms with the low end. So if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you guys liked, comment, and subscribed. It helps more than you know. And stick around because we're going to continue the series for 31 days to a better metal mix.